shed engineering but not as you know it making this cylinder and piston 12 o'clock 10 to 12 air's just coming through and it's about 7 o'clock she's going so that's about a third of a turn and that's open half a turn Hello there, Alan Plum here with a little more from Shed Engineering. Now we're going to uh, make a start on the cylinder. This is made from 4 inch soil pipe and the most important thing is to make absolutely sure that the base is totally square. Now this took me some 20-25 minutes but as I say it is really important that it's absolutely vertical then we needed to cut the pipe or cylinder to length and the best way I've found of doing this is wrapping a piece of paper round sellotaping it where they join up and that gives you a very accurate um, line to work to then I held it lightly in the vise and cut it to length using a very fine tooth saw and then sanded it square. I then needed to make a flange for around the top of the cylinder. This was done with just small strips or rings cut off the soil pipe and glued around. Obviously the circumference kept getting bigger and bigger as I put uh, three or four rings on uh, but I just cut small smaller pieces and glued them in and then sanded it down now I think the cylinder and piston have got to be the two most vital components in any steam engine and any piece of plastic pipe is not going to be true you'd be quite surprised how many ripples there are inside so I'd agonized for a long time just what the design of the piston could be because it had got to be virtually flexible to take up any uh, discrepancies in the plastic cylinder so one option was to use plastic food containers because they're tapered even a big one like this uh, it's injection molded and so because it's tapered it will come out of the mold easier and so this was a an early experiment just a piece of uh, I think it's three inch rainwater pipe and 
if I can just demonstrate here if the piece of MDF is your cylinder and the white card is a food container that is tapered then as you drop it into the piece of pipe or cylinder at some point it becomes a snug fit now you can cut it off there and obviously the food container would be flexible and you'd have a, a nicely sealing piston so this for instance would make an ideal piston but unfortunately it's just too small if it had just drop in perhaps uh, five six seven millimeters and I could cut it off just there then it would make a an ideal flexible um, piston and this shows that early experiment I think this was uh, the bottom of a fairy liquid bottle so we've got a slight taper because it's right at the bottom and it's flexible all we need is uh, a couple of plastic washers there to support it I secured this with some hot glue and the experiment worked very very well but because I hadn't found anything suitable I decided to go with two discs of plastic with felt in between and this is the system I use for making the discs for the piston I've got a piece of old MDF on the sanding plate and as you can see I've drilled through the center placed a drill through and the circumference that I actually want is coinciding with the edge of the MDF so I can now turn the plastic discs uh, gradually sand them down and there's no way I can make them too small because I, I start sanding the MDF away and I uh, use the same principle on making other plastic parts like the blue washers uh, in between the beam I then used some felt that I'd got from Hobbycraft and cut two discs just a little bit larger than the plastic ones and the two felt discs were placed in between and liberally smeared with grease so we now had two plastic discs making up the piston and sandwiched between are the felt discs smeared in grease the piston is probably three millimeters smaller than the cylinder and the felt obviously acts as a flexible seal or oh, that's what I was hoping all this was purely experimental at this stage and so I thought it was about time that we should see whether it works before we go any further so I came up with this crude device as you can see I've got the valve tubes fitted and my intention is to blow air into the horizontal inlet pipe there and it will go down and feed into the cylinder thereby pushing the piston up hopefully and the piston rod will push on the seesaw where my hand is that seesaw has been balanced so there's no actual weight on the piston rod and hopefully we can test whether the piston actually works and we join the video just as I zero the digital scales now oh, that's zeroed that's 7.9 ounces plus another five ounces so we'll pop them on there I'm going to turn the vacuum on which I'm afraid is going to be a little bit noisy and we'll see whether we can get the seesaw to actually lift
Well, that's a, a good start. Let's try that. That's a, a pound and one ounce. I'll try and centre it over the piston. How much is it going to lift? That's uh, one pound Crikey. pound ten ounces I'm running out of things to lift that's three pound one ounce ounces as you can see I'm only pointing the uh, the um, nozzle at the inlet pipe but it's not actually fixed on call it a day at that and to try and show that I'm not cheating that is three pounds 8.9 ounces must be that must be 14 14 ounces God, that doesn't sound very good does it we've got 14 14 foot ounces of torque is that right I don't know I better go and check that is 14 foot ounces of torque any good for a model? Jeremy Clarkson wouldn't think so. Thank you for watching.